Okay, we are delighted on the Red 78 podcast this week to be joined by Munster Attack Coach Mike Prendergast. Mike, how are you, sir? Good, Rory. Thanks. Thanks for having me on, lads. And thanks for coming on with us. I know Cunny's very excited to, to talk to you and give you a bit of a grill in here now, so this should be uh, an interesting conversation. Before I pass you over to Cunny, just a few bits from me, I suppose. Um, the big news today, Billy Burns signing for Munster for next season, which is a, a big, big uh, get for Munster, I suppose. Yeah, he's, um, he's a super signing for us. Um, you know, he's an experienced player. I think when you look through uh, the experience he has, he's over 100 games played with, with Gloucester. He's over 100 games played with, with Ulster and he's, he's seven Irish caps as well. So um, he'll bring a lot of experience. And I think that's that's the big thing as well, just in terms of his, um, his age profile as well. We're losing, obviously, Joey, who's an experienced guy with, with plenty of caps. Um, to be able to bring in someone like Billy is, is a real positive um, signing, I think, for us um, in terms of said, his profile, his age profile, but also as a, his player profile. I think the way we play, he'll suit us. I think technically he's a very good player. Um, he's got a very good short kicking game, very good passing game. So um, we're, we're excited to, um, to get him on board for, for next season. And just speaking about how, how proud of you were, uh, were, were you of Jack Crowley and his performances over the Six Nations, he seems like he took over that number 10 shirt like he owned it. Yeah, Jack has been he's been excellent. Um, I think last year as well, you, you, you look at the, the season he had um, coming into this season and um, he's, he's a guy who's just working incredibly hard in his game. Um, at 24 years of age, he's, he's, he's quite young for, for the position he's in and obviously to take over from someone like like Johnny Sexton's obviously there's a lot of pressure going to come with that, and I thought he he uh, he, he equipped himself and um, he were were very very impressive. And, and the great thing about Jack is there's still a good bit to go, and he's the first guy that will will tell you that as well. But in terms of um, the, the Six Nations he had, um, it was very I suppose mature Six Nations in terms of his performance. Um, so he, he'll be delighted and it's great going forward for, for, for Irish rugby and, and for Munster rugby. Yeah, Mike, it's great to have you on on the podcast because, um, you know, we started this podcast last year and really we wanted to try and get fan interaction and just get a feel for, for what people on, you know, diehard rugby fans in Munster, um, uh, what, what their thoughts are and try and keep them connected with, the, with the, what's going on in Munster as best we can. Obviously, given our own opinions as well, um, just from your own personal experience, um, coming back to Munster last season, I know we're going back a little bit. Um, you were on the road for a long time. We haven't had you on the podcast, so I always wanted to kind of get this insight for you. It isn't the media grilling this podcast, but what's it like being back, um, you know, last year and having the success? Maybe to start the last season, it was a tough start. You lost, you won two out of the first seven and then end up winning at the end of the season. So, for you being a monster man coming back in and being involved in the transition of where the team plays and getting the success in the end, what, what was that like? And how, how do you feel about um, the group of people that you have, the players that are there at the moment? I think, I think first and foremost, it was, it was um, the experience of being away was, was, was brilliant. Um, nine seasons away between Grenoble, Oyonnax, Stade Francais and, and, and Racing. Um, experienced a lot. It was in different environments under different coaches, obviously an array of different players, and I think that's something that's um, that was really important in terms of, I suppose, my own coaching um, development. Just getting exposed to so many, so many different players. If you look at most teams in France, they'll have twelve or fourteen different nationalities, and I think if you can embrace that and and be very open with it, uh, you learn a lot through it. Even, you know, you look at, I suppose, the last club I was with in, in Racing in terms of the some of the, the players and the, and the profiles that I would have coached, the likes of Finn Russell, Virmi Vekatawa, um, Juan Imhoff, Gail Fiku, these guys, you're talking, you know, guys with huge world experience. And, and being honest, and, and with previous clubs as well, I, I learned a lot through that. Um, so I had a great time on, on the road. Um, but your home club is your home club. And it would have been always something that I would have, I suppose, kept my eye on um, if the opportunity had ever come up. Um, and I think it's important as well when I was, I suppose, a younger coach as well is, is to go away and, and try and upskill yourself as much as you can. And probably in, in tough environments as well, 
like the top 14, but especially with the clubs I was with in my earlier career over there with, with Grenoble, Oyanax, it's a, they're probably two clubs that are trying to stay afloat in the top 14. Um, and you learn a lot about, your, I suppose, yourself and and um, and as a coach as well, because the reality is with clubs like that, you're losing. I had this conversation earlier with a few of the coaches. You're losing 70, 80 percent of your of your games and you're going in on a Monday and you're trying to find positives. And you're trying to find, um, I suppose, the key aspects to really what to go after. Um, so there's great learnings over there. And as I said, um, fortunately enough, the phone call came through from from Graham and um, he was assembling his coaching staff and I just liked what he had to to say. He really wanted his coaches to coach because I suppose the world, you know, we've through different clubs, through your experience. Um, some head coaches like like to coach and like to um I suppose what I'm trying to get at is that Graham, he allows you as a coach to 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 get your ideas across and, and he gives you the time um and he gives you the space. And I think that was something probably you mentioned at the start of last year, we came in and, and I suppose in terms of how we wanted to play, we changed it up a bit. There were still great fundamentals and foundations there, which is always really, really important in the game we we, we coach because you go nowhere unless you, you have those fundamentals in there. And that, and that 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 was there, fortunately. And we just, I suppose, added a few aspects in terms of how, how we wanted to play. Um, you're, you're, you're being modest there now because, look, um, and I know you are modest, the reality is no, nobody saw the type of attack uh, that we that we saw last year in previous coaching regimes for a long period of time. Anyway, I think if you go back to when we played and, you know, the profile of Dougie Howlett's and Maffey's and Topoki's mm-hmm. and, and, and Ronald O'Gara at 10 and stuff like that, obviously a different profile of player, but we hadn't seen the sort of attack that you produced in the second half of last season. So mm-hmm. you've got to take credit for that. And and that's just a reality. Um, you must be proud of the fact of that transition, which you say credit to the head coach. He's letting yeah. you go ahead and do your stuff. Dennis Leamy do his stuff. Andy Kiriakou, Mossy Lawler's in there this year. So yeah. um, you've got to take credit for that, Mike. We haven't seen Munster play like this in a very long time. Y- yeah, but I suppose just... To, to, to carry on in terms of what what Graham allowed was he allowed us as coaches to, to implement what what we wanted in terms of attack and as you meant, alluded to Dennis defensively and I think there was and we could see it and that was the reality there was, there was mistakes at the start um, it, it takes a bit of time I know I, I had said it that Rome wasn't built in a day etc cetera, etc cetera, but um, that's the reality it, it, we were I suppose parts of, of of our habits what we were trying to do in a daily um in our daily regime was was changing up a small bit and that does take time i think even when you look back to ireland when they shifted i suppose in terms of um how how in terms of how they play now as opposed to maybe going back a number of years ago when, when there was there was a change around um that probably took a bit of time at the start as well but we've we've seen how well they've nailed it and how i suppose much they've progressed and and that's the I think that the exciting things for us here, there's there's still a, a good bit of room for improvement. We want to keep layering aspects of our game. I think something that we probably have layered a small bit this year, and I just wanted to give it a bit of time in the first year to really focus on our framework and getting our 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 pod work or or micro plays, we call them, all those nailed down and and you know, adding to that. And I think one maybe aspect we have added this year in terms of is just our, our short offensive kicking game. And I spoke about, you know, the players that are that we have here at the moment in terms of Joey, um, Tony Butler we've seen, and obviously Jack Crowley. Um, you know, it, it's a really, it's a very big part of what we're trying to do. So, albeit we, we you know, we, we won a trophy at the end of last year. Um, there was mistakes at the start probably come Christmas or, or just after we could see it that it was it was, it was coming together um, and we finished the year well um, but you're always also looking then to to improve that and we've kept on to the majority of what we're doing we're, as I said we're just adding bits and pieces in terms of the offensive kicking game part of it so um, so overall look I suppose the question you're asking me coming back to, to Limerick and coming back to, to Munster massively exciting it was and as I said I think what how Graham um explained what what he wanted to do because at the end of the day he's the head coach and he's to 
when we were losing games, he was the guy going out answering the questions and he showed real belief and trust within us as coaches and the players. Um, and that could have easily changed come Christmas, you know, in terms of very easy for him to turn around to me and say, you know, we need to we need to probably kick a bit more here. But and I know it was it was a it was mentioned before, um, and Graham was the one talking about he could see it in training. We changed how we trained. Um, and that does take time. And I think you probably saw after Christmas, um, you know, a lot of that, I suppose, come together. Yeah, just even just, you know, just on talking about that, Mike, a lot of players, you'd ask them, you know, who, what coach influenced them when they were in the, on their playing career. But I, I've always wondered, because you've such a variety of coaching behind you, even in Young Munster, but is there any particular coach that would have had a, a, a big thing on your coaching career? And what was that? Like, what, what kind of things stuck with you in your philosophy around that? Yeah, I, I don't know if you understand if there's actually actually one. I think by by traveling a bit in terms of I was a player as well. Obviously played at Munster, went to Gloucester, went to Bourguan, have coached a couple of clubs. Um, so I think just the, the, I suppose the experience of of experiencing different types of coaches. Um, you know, you have some coaches that are quite heavy focused on on kicking. You have other coaches, which, and I, I know he's obviously well known here in the media. Bernard Jackman was was a brilliant coach to uh, to work mm. with. Just he's, and, and you can see it in, in the work he does at the moment. Um, but just his his vision for the game, um, and the ideas he had, and he was very clear in it. Um, and he definitely would be one that that I have to have to name check. But I think overall, it's just as I said, probably with the the travel and, and the different clubs I had. Um, and players as well. You learn an awful lot of true players, as you said. Ma mentioned a few guys like Finn Russell there. Um, you know they come up with ideas. He's been in different environments. You pull little bits and pieces. I know you you know it yourself from your own coaching. You have your own philosophy, um, but there's little aspects of that that you'll always keep keep adding to true um, your own ideas or or something that you know. As I said, that you might see teams doing on a. On a that's a regular trend or, or 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 speaking to different players. And I think um, you know, Hartley Beale, for example, played yeah. played with an Australian team that would be renowned for how they played um in terms of attack. He was he was a great guy to to sit down and chat to and pull little ideas. So um I think it's you know what, it's kind of an overall um experience more so than than me picking out one or two coaches as such. Would you have had um uh, would you pick Ronan's brains at times, uh, Mike, being in France and stuff like that over the years? He had it a bit easier because he had big budgets. When you were with Grenoble and Ina, you were down at the bottom of the table trying to scrape wins where, you know, a bit more luxury in, in the type of players and the, and the money that, you know, he would have had it been at Racing or, or even when he came back to La Rochelle as well. I'm sure, like, he, he had a big influence on all of our playing careers when we played with him. And then we actually ended up going over to France the same year, um, 2013. Raj went to, to Racing and I went to Grenoble. So there would have been all, all, all was that. Obviously, played with him, but I think it was more when we got over there, we probably got closer and 100% we would have been sound boards for each other, sounding boards for each other, I should say. Um, you know, you're in a different, in, in completely different environment with a different language. Sometimes you can feel, especially in the early days, when you probably didn't have the language, you can feel. I won't say isolated, but you feel a small bit on your own and to, to be able to pick up a phone things often was huge. And you know what? We continue that, I suppose, through our careers. And, you know, you look at I don't know it's been well documented. You look at Ronan and, and, and what he's done. He's, I suppose, done a few clubs as well, and particularly on, on the other side of the world, going through someone like Crusaders. So I just think by getting to, to the different environments and being exposed to that is something that massively helps you in terms of your in terms of your growth it's tough at the time especially when you're in a different country and you have a family and you're asking them to move and the kids are moving to school um every couple of years that ain't easy um but as i said you know it, it, it is in terms of really equipping yourself as a coach it's something that i'd always look back and i'd have no regrets in terms of um you know i suppose moving a couple of times Mike, can yeah. I just ask, um, I suppose I suppose it might be a broad question, but how has the game changed since you were a player compared to where you are now as a coach? And therefore, how has coaching changed, do you think, in that time? 
Yeah, I think I think the game has changed in terms of, especially now with the speed of it. Um, you know, it, it's 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 a in general, obviously, weather can can hamper it a small bit, but um, the speed of the game, obviously, the power, the athletes that you have, um, and then thing has changed a huge amount. There's just there's so much in it now in terms of I suppose both sides of the ball, attack, defence. Kicking game, obviously you still have your your fundamentals, your set piece, etc. The rock, your carry, your footwork, um, you know that was that was always we'd say there. But to try and I suppose from an attack point of view, to try and break down defenses and find space, there's there's different aspects now you have got to, you've got to look at in terms of being connected, um, how well you can communicate, how well you can scan, um, you know. Probably that that has not probably, but that has shifted over the last this was ten years or so, um, and and probably for the better of the game. Because look, my philosophy anyway is is you want to play with with speed, you know, but it, but it's how you do it, um, and there's a lot in that when you talk about it. So you can throw it out. You're saying you you want to you can come in and you can talk about um, talk about your philosophy, talk away about how you want to coach, you want to play fast, but it's it the reality is. You've got to get your nuts and bolts, et cetera, in, in there. Um, and that goes back to my, you know, fundamentals and foundations. And, and to be fair to, the, to the, all the coaches that were here before me in Munster, that was something that was already instilled and well coached. And then it was just about, you know, adding parts of that and, and maybe changing the philosophy, I suppose, a small bit. But in terms of the fundamentals, they stay the same. But certain aspects of the game in terms of movement, speed, movement, you know, We'd be a team, not just us. There's a lot of teams like that that we ask a lot of our, our backs, especially um, in terms of being on one edge to get to the other edge. We, we we can see it in terms of how Ireland play. You saw, I think, a great example of you know evolving. You saw England. Unfortunately, it was against Ireland, or, or sorry, it wasn't. It was on the weekend against France, where Tommy Freeman carries in the 22. He carries. He ball presents. He's off the ground, and he's the guy that scores on the edge. The reason he scores in the edge, it's it's a numbers game at the end of the day. So if you have more numbers than the opposition outside there, there's a good chance you're going to go forward, you're going to score. Um, and that's something we talk about. I, I have a big, I suppose, focus on is the numbers game and having more numbers. So you teams being able to swing um, wingers, you know, 15 centers that are out there. But that's only all as good as what's done between the 15s. And that's where you ask a lot from your forwards. So everything is, is you know, I suppose going back years ago in terms of your forwards and backs and you split a lot. Now the splits are, are, are so, they're shorter because the game is, I keep saying, a sorry, a 15 man, but it's a 23 man game. And that's probably something we can talk about further into the discussion. Um, probably look at South Africa and they've, they've got that right. They, they mixed and matched a bit to get there in terms of the four years, but I think, um, their their solution at the end of the day was something that was very effective with, with with the profiles and the team they had. So and teams and profiles are of your players are different, and that's something I I suppose I had to assess when I came in here. There's certain aspects that um, suit a team when you're a coach, or certain plays that suit a team, or certain frameworks, and there's certain that that mightn't. And and you've got to get to make sure you try and get that right as well. So. In terms of the coaching, there is, there is a, a, I suppose, a bit in it, yes.